Today, we're on the slow coast of California, Santa Cruz County. We're announcing my fund initialized, led a funding round for Jupe, a new startup working on universal autonomous housing. Jupe today makes a structure for under 20 grand that can be put up or taken down by a few people in a few hours. Right now, it's solar power, a bed, and good shelter for temperate climates. But this is just the roadster to their Tesla vision of making billions of acres of land on our planet habitable for 1.6 billion people. I spent a night under the stars in a jupe, and this morning we're hanging out on site with the founder, Jeff Wilson. Jeff, thanks for having me here, you know, bringing us all the way out here. Where are we and what's happening here? This is a special place. There was a guy named Wallace that had a house here. Just last year in the middle of the pandemic, a fire came through, wiped out his house, which is right behind us, and left a place that really there was nothing but memories. It was a home he built with his own hands. The day his daughter went off to college, it burned. Yeah, and so you can see that in the trees here. They're all burnt to a crisp on the bottom part, but... Yeah, this was just August of yeah. last year. I mean, it really is a phoenix rising out of the ashes here. He wanted to do something different on the land rather than just rebuilding another house he really wanted to have a space where folks could have a deep experience of nature so how do you actually live in a place in nature but off the grid without being sort of connected to the things that might have brought the fire here in the first place what he wanted to do was also have something that wasn't going to require a lot of infrastructure that could be set up and moved quickly. Yeah. So if a sense. fire was coming through again, these jupes that we've got set up out here could be picked up and moved. Meeting you, it was so interesting to watch. Like, how do we make one of these things? How do we make housing, but in an EAM sort of way? The best for the most for the least. Right. By making things smaller, it brings into focus experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And by starting with something small and over a short period of time of experiencing that, we can really dial in the experience of, of nature. Well, I slept in one last night and I have to say, it's probably the deepest sleep that I've had in, I don't know, ever, ever maybe. Waking up to the babbling brook, there's yeah. a crazy rain just last night. No sirens. Yeah, exactly. We're not in San Francisco right now, that's for sure. Why do you think you slept so well? Because I hear that. Yeah. We've had really high strung people out here. Like yeah, yeah, one yeah. of the first employees at Tesla, I think maybe the, one of the first five employees said he had never slept this well in his sort of memorable life. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. It felt like sleeping in a spaceship on my way to Earth and the commentary of that is like, maybe a lot of us don't actually spend a lot of time connecting with the Earth ship that we live on, actually. Right. Even just standing here, I saw the photos on the internet, right? Yeah. But the second I actually stepped foot and saw one of these things, the scale of it is a different thing, right? Yeah, it's almost like it's sort of bending space a little bit. The design, you know, we're very much a design-led company to where we started with folks that had designed things like cars and solar panels and said, think about the space as if it was a product, right, that you literally lived in. I think the closest thing it feels to uh, actually is almost like being in a cave on an $800 mattress, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, And that opening with the light in mm -hmm. front of you and the darkness sort of around you, I think that's triggering something fairly deep and old in the brain, but not by design. Right. <laughs> yeah, the interesting thing about it was it was instant deep sleep that normally if I'm at a hotel, even like a really nice hotel, yeah. you don't ever actually sleep all the way. Like it actually, I read someplace that you actually need to sleep like two or three nights in the same place for your body to even get to a point of like, oh, I don't have to be in a state of any anxiety at mm -hmm. all about a place. And mm -hmm. then, you know, it's deeply primal, but sort of feels like just being at home. <laughs> yeah, and maybe it's just like a lot of the variables yeah. of why we don't sleep 
are removed. Yeah. Well, right? I do know that I couldn't access Twitter from here. And <laughs> I know. That was are a you very okay? good thing. Are, that was a very did good the thing. universe survive? Yeah, Is yeah, it going to yeah, be no. there when we're back? I hope so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that, right? So we want to put these jupes in like the very deepest parts of nature. There right. are infinite places like this on the planet yeah. that have just never been accessible in a comfortable way. Well, then if you can have the option to add some of that tech back into the equation, right? right. I mean, it won't be long before we'll have Starlink here, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you can make sure if you need to get on a tweet storm about uh, the, the babbling brook or how good your sleep was, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that you'd be able to do that. So we're, we're at your crib. Yeah, this is exactly where I had the best night of sleep in my life. <laughs> it's a pretty nice spot. <laughs> yeah, let's check it out, man. So you're just gonna zip these up. There you go. So the amazing thing is this is actually really durable material. One of the materials we've used is like out of the yacht industry. Right on, right on. Um, you have to have something that, um, you know, is resistant to moisture and UV. All right, let's check your crib out. That's beautiful. Thank you, sir. Get the mosquito net up. This is the cave. Hey, uh, you did a pretty good job at uh, making your bed, yeah, I have trying, to say, trying, you, know? you know? Yeah. Mama taught me right. These things are off-grid, yeah, right? Yeah. Because we want to be able to pop them up anywhere and don't want to have to plug them in. So uh, we've got lights here at the front door, or I guess you could have turned them off right there on, on the headboard. And so this is all powered by a couple of batteries and four solar panels that we've got outside. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things that's really interesting. Like, there's a really strong why now. You know, same reason why you got van life going on and, you know, this sort of new wave of living outdoors. Well, after one night, I'm like, well, I could probably, I could get used to this. This is really beautiful. And my favorite thing, though, is because there's electricity, you have this electric blanket set up that is dialed in perfectly. Yeah, yeah. It, um, you know, there's something about being this deep in nature and having an electric blanket yeah. on a really comfortable mattress. Right. And something about that in this very thin like layer, this very thin barrier that's almost not there between those worlds, yeah. I think that's something very interesting that we're playing with here. Folks don't really believe it till they're in one. I think also these black ones suppress and block the light so well. Yeah. It's 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 almost like you're in some sort of sleep chamber uh, when you're in here. It's, yeah. It's uh it's easy to sleep ten hours. So everyone comes in and sort of you know sees all of this and this is beautiful. But the real secret is actually down here. This is the technology piece. Yeah, the real magic really happens right under your feet. Yeah. Um, our original Y Combinator application for this company yeah. didn't have anything to do with this. Yeah. It was actually just the gadget, what we call the chassis. Yeah. Um, actually, our company was actually just named after, it was named Foundation when we originally applied. So the idea here is that you have this shippable, flat packable brick that acts as the foundation so you don't need to pour one, but also has all these like modular elements in it that we call like intramodular. So we've got all of these cavities like this that we can store stuff in or put these implements. This is our one that covers all of the solar. So underneath there, there's a couple of big batteries. We have our inverter and this whole module just slides in. So we could slide in, make this thing one huge battery. We could take out the bed and make this a dining room. And then we can also do different things with the top. We could 3D print on this because all the guts of the home are in the floor. Yeah. Stick build, whatever you wanted to do. Well, Jeff, I mean... Wait, did you. You, did you grow up in a barn? You know, you got to turn off your, the lights oh, when shoot. you leave the house. <laughs> it's a very, uh, it's well, very, it's a very Texan. <laughs> <laughs> my dad used to barn. say that to me. <laughs> did you grow up in a barn, son? Oh, my God. I'm glad you slept well. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm going to bring back my family. We're going to bring all our friends. I could just see this being a thousand times better than camping alone right now, but... I just have to thank you for letting us be on this journey with you, like, you know, getting to work with you on this. 
I'm super psyched about this like universal autonomous housing idea. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I, you know, when we were thinking about who we wanted to work with, um, my co-founder and I, one of the things we talked about was like, okay, this glamping thing's profitable, it's working, it's pretty cool, but we don't want our legacy to be uh, Coachella. Yeah, yeah. Alone. Right. Coachella's yeah. fun, but... And if I anything, think it's like, how do we turn that into something that is even greater? Yeah. And I, the, the, what you guys, you and Kim specifically were interested in was this much larger thing, right? Which is this uh, 1.6 billion people that don't have adequate housing uh, in the world, um, which is which is crazy. Yeah. I mean, I think what you're doing here is actually like if Airbnb and Tesla had a baby, because there are a lot of like Tesla Roadster like things about what we see and what you're doing here, where it's like yeah. the powertrain of a house. That's right. right. And then how do we go from there to, you know, for Tesla, it's going to electrify every vehicle in existence right. and, you know, bring about this new future. And housing to me is a right. We're fighting tooth and nail for like these tiny plots of land. Human beings are just screaming at each other and arguing about, about how this. tall they can be who can live there even the space the airspace yeah. above them yeah and then people are arguing about look at this yeah look at this you know like <laughs> look at this if you wanted this to be a titanic moment i can yeah. like it <laughs> this is a very special place yeah but also it's astonishing how many places in the world can be this special right it's not special on its own on its own this is a valley Right. right. Like when you put this here with this power, with this bed, with community, right? And that's the other piece that right. I think is really important here. Like this isn't just a powertrain. It's also an experience and it's design led the way, you know, Brian and Joe at Airbnb have done it. Right. Yeah. And I mean, on that design led um, tip, you know, one of the things we, we, we tried to build into this was a form that was aspirational that really sort of got burnt into your retina and you couldn't forget yeah, right yeah. almost like the cyber truck you mm -hmm. can't really unsee it yeah and so um the use of the angles and the sort of impossibility of the structure also adds to like some of that magic that we're trying to curate it's it's weird when you're out here it's like they so much don't fit with the geometry of the space that they kind of do. Yeah. Right. This is very much an Adams thing, yeah. a hard tech play, but there's also a whole software platform that we're developing out that's going to allow folks to do the basic things, right? Like, you know, book um, and for landowners to like look at how things are being booked on their property, but also, um, you know, you, you'll have an app that you'll be able to hit when you get on site, a button and your jupe will light up. Yeah. Um, when you walk into the room, uh, the jupe, your Spotify will load up yeah, on the speakers. Yeah, it's personalized. Okay, I gotta stop right there because I forgot to say something. We're investors in this amazing mix of Tesla and Airbnb, and I wanted to mention that Jupe is hiring a CTO and software engineers right now. If you wanna build this community-based web and mobile experience, or join this team to build the future of all autonomous housing, you have to visit jupe.com jobs right now. All right, back to the video. I mean, the cool thing about this stuff is how do we actually bring just this type of wealth and in housing and experience to basically everyone. I mean, Mark Andreessen talks a lot about reality privilege, sort of in contrast to basically the metaverse, like everyone's spending pretty much all of their lives on the internet now, right? Like, watching these YouTube videos. Watching these videos, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, they do that at least partially because now I realize that's what wealth is. Wealth lets people have reality privilege and wealth inequality means that like people don't get to live really good lives in like meat space. Right. And then we're descending into like the internet, you know, like we're sort of receding into the internet. Right. And then at the same time, like if we have good engineering and we have unlimited money, how could we not invest as deeply as possible 
into making our current reality, this reality, right as rich as possible for one another. If you look at the world as an engineer, then you start trying to pick apart what are the constraints. We are fighting over like the same tiny scraps of land in cities all over the world. Why do we have to scream at each other all day over that when this world is so big? It's crazy. Yeah, and why do we need to be there? If everything else is decentralizing, if we could decentralize the grid, yeah. right? The guts of a home and the infrastructure required in a city and the community, yeah. right? Which is already largely decentralized. Totally. Then maybe you have a new way of living. Yeah. I think it's easier to design the future than to engineer the future, yeah. right? So when you're talking about solving really big, hard problems, you have to tell stories and design needs to inform those stories about what the future will look yeah. like. So here's a couple of the panels that we have. I actually have a background, not just working in design in this sort of space, but uh, I was an environmental science professor before yeah. this. I heard you were the top ranked I, most I, 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 I don't, I don't know about that. I just handed out A's, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, one of the things that's really important to us from both a philosophical standpoint, but also just a really practical one is that we operate off grid. Yeah. So there are no power lines that come through this valley anymore. The only running water is this stream here. And so we need to design a platform for living that can literally pop up anywhere, give you a uh, you know good living experience, and then give give you internet right from something like Starlink. Yeah. The idea we were talking about earlier mm. last night, we were sitting over here yeah. under the stars, right, looking up at these trees and this this whole yeah. idea that a lot of folks are talking about. Going the to the stars. Yeah, oh, right? going to the, I mean, that's the thing. Either we are uh, retreating from the earth that we should really cherish, or we're retreating into like our phones, right? Right. Into the metaverse, right? Into the metaverse. Right. And it's like kind of look over here. <laughs> yeah. A sort of look at this shiny thing over here, but all the while the earth is kind of burning, yeah. right? And yeah. it's going to be pretty hard to load six, seven, eight billion people onto a ship just yet. Yeah. I think we should support the cause, right? Gonna need to do it eventually, but we're trying to build a sort of living platform for those of us that are gonna have to stick around a little while longer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that probably goes for pretty much all of us. This is where you brought us last night, Bottle and Mezcal and the whole universe. Yeah, the, you, you wouldn't have really probably noticed this until it's pointed out, but there are jupes over here, up here, back here, and they all point to this very sort of central space where we were all sitting last night. And I think this is the real core, the real heart of Jupe, the real soul of it, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we spend a lot of our time like either yeah. here or sort of here, right? And the stars going to Mars or wherever. And the real, real, the real reality happens here here and in the now. Well, I just, you know, want to thank you for building this and we're just all really lucky and thankful to be working with you and what Jupe will be.